hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be going through methods used to monitor Earth's climate for your AQA, A-level environmental science. Now to go with this video there is a set of questions for you to try after you've watched it over my website and then we have practice papers for you, predictive papers for you and example A-star essays. A-level environmental science Topic 1. The Living Environment Lesson 3. Methods used to monitor Earth's climate Historical climate data Think back 200 years ago or more. They would not have had the technological advancements that we have today to monitor climate regularly. There also weren't as many people monitoring the climate, so there are quite a few gaps in the data, both spatially and temporally. Furthermore, Collaboration between researchers would have been sporadic and unmonitored. All these factors mean that often, historic data has a low reliability. However, it is vital for us to have data on the past conditions so we can understand what is happening today. So what can we do? We have to use something called proxy data. Proxy data can be defined as indirect measurements of the climate. So for example, you wouldn't have data that has come from someone monitoring the climate directly. Instead, we would get the data from something that might indicate what the climate was like at the time it was formed. A really good example of this is the study of tree growth rings, otherwise known as dendrochronology. Dendrochronology works because a tree ring forms every year and you can tell by the thickness of the ring how much that tree grew in that year. A thicker tree growth ring may therefore suggest a warmer climate that year. However, there are a couple of limitations, such as the fact that tree growth is not just influenced by temperature and light alone. It could also have been caused by a bigger supply of water or an influx of nutrients, and that is not something we can determine. Also, you do not find trees in every area of the earth, so the data cannot be collected everywhere. Drilling of ice cores. We can use ice cores in two ways, gas bubble analysis or oxygen isotope analysis. Ice can be dated as the different layers can be matched to the approximate year they were formed. So the deeper you go, the older the ice. Gas bubble analysis is where scientists look at the composition of the gases in the air pockets of the ice. If you found a layer that had a much higher proportion of carbon dioxide than the rest, this might tell us that the temperatures were warmer that year, as CO2 is a greenhouse gas and traps heat. Oxygen isotope analysis looks at the ratio of oxygen 16 and oxygen 18 in the ice. Remember from GCSE chemistry, an isotope is just a different form of an atom. They are both oxygen, just oxygen 18 is slightly higher in mass due to more neutrons in its nucleus. Based on the ratio of the two isotopes, scientists can then approximate the temperature of the climate at the time the ice layer was formed. Again, this is not an exact science and there is no telling what factors could have caused the patterns we see for certain, but that is a risk we take with proxy data. Pollen grain analysis is a technique where pollen grains can be removed from the soil and analysed under a microscope. If you find the pollen of a plant that usually likes warm temperatures, then you can interpret that the area you located must have once been warmer if it is cold now. Again, not an exact science as pollen can be distributed by the wind over large distances, so just because you find a pollen in that area doesn't mean that the plant was there too. Another limitation is that the pollen grains tend to only be preserved in wetter environments. And not all plants produce a lot of pollen, so the data will not be possible to collect in all areas. Overall, it is good to practice evaluating methods of proxy data, giving the examiner both positives and negatives, as this is a common question in the exam. Now we're going to look at how satellites can be used to collect direct data on a large scale. Satellites themselves do not collect the data. They are simply carriers for the monitoring devices. They are found in the upper levels of our atmosphere. Some advantages of satellite data collection are that it collects a lot of data quickly and on a large scale continuously with low manpower once they're up in the atmosphere. 
they also allow us to collect data of areas that would be unreachable on foot due to being too dangerous for humans to enter. As well as preventing destruction of a habitat when humans would usually go in and take samples. Of course, the initial setup could be quite expensive and the data may be less detailed as physical samples cannot be collected. In the past, the questions in the exam have required knowledge of a specific type of satellite, so if you can, learn them all. One example of a satellite is the GRACE, the Gravity Recovery and Climate Experiment, which are two satellites that map variations in the gravitational field, which could be caused by changes in mass due to the changing ocean currents or ice melting. Another example is altimetry, where a device releases a radar pulse to the Earth's surface and measures the amount of time it takes to bounce back. This can be used for measuring the elevation of ice. If elevation reduces, then it shows ice has melted and mass has reduced. A similar example to this is called the LIDAR, which works in the same way, but instead releases light towards the ground that can then be reflected off the ice surface, and the time taken to do so is recorded. Computer models are a resource that we use quite a lot now to predict future climate patterns. Data can be inputted into the computer and the program will create predictions for future years based on what is happening now. Just like with all equipment, it is important to calibrate a computer model to test it is accurate. The easiest way to do this is to input data of a year that has already passed, for example 2002, and then see if it correctly predicts what happens the next year in 2003. So with each of the data collection techniques we have talked through in this lesson, ensure you have some positives and limitations of each, as evaluation is a key skill required to hit AO3 in your exams. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches.